Hello and welcome once again to Amsterdam where our third game of the day here is uh, the crunch game in Pool B between New Zealand and England. Whatever was going to happen in the first round of games in this pool, this was always going to be a key game. And uh, with all four sides drawing with each other on the opening day here, it just got a little bit more so. Earlier today in the match between India and China, the two Asian giants produced yet another draw with China taking the lead in open play, but pegged back with a smooth penalty corner deflection, which will have pleased uh, India's coach, Yannicka Shopman. Now, uh, England and New Zealand go toe to toe in an attempt to put matters in their own hands. The holy grail of tournament play. Remember, it's only the team who wins each pool that advances directly to the quarterfinals. While uh, in this pool, the teams who finish second and third will have to travel to Terrassa in Spain to find a new opposition in the crossover games. New Zealand blew hot and cold in their uh, first game with China, taking the lead, losing it and going behind before uh, finding an equaliser. England uh, also went ahead through uh, an excellent Izzy Pettigol, but were pegged back to uh, one all and needed Maddie Hinch at her very best and the frame of the goal to secure the point in the end. So the scene is uh, set here for uh, the final game of the day here in Amsterdam in this uh, pool which just uh, nobody seems to be able to win a game. Will that uh, change here and now, I wonder? Well, New Zealand and England know each other's games uh, pretty well. So often in major tournaments, they seem to get slung together. Both will, of course, be competing in the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, which follows shortly after this uh, World Cup event in this crazy, crazy summer of hockey. Before the uh, start of the game, we were able to have a word with uh, both of the coaches. Let's hear what they had to say. Look, England come with a bit of attacking intent. Uh, they've got some direct forwards. They go forward. We admire some of their stick work and skill and, and uh, Owsley and Martin are going to have to defend well and tackle those guys well. We also think they're pretty crafty at the back and, and they handle the ball well through uh, a, a back three that shows a lot of experience too and a very talented goalkeeper. You know, so we have to get up on them and press them and, and take the time away from them and, and just hopefully we win some of those small battles that are important in hockey. So whether it's the, the penalty corners or whether it's some of those attacking chances that fall in our way or, or whether we can defend effectively. They're the sort of things that we have to target in this match. New Zealand are, are a good team and will definitely challenge us. So we, in the first half against India, we were quite incisive, created some opportunities, but then, you know, the flip side of that gave them too many opportunities. The second half, we had a bit more control of the game, but then lacked that incisiveness that we had in the first half. So we missed some opportunities to, you know, go a little bit quicker when we won the ball and things like that. So it's a kind of, it's a mix of the first half and the second half and trying to do that for a bit longer in the game. You were unable to win a single penalty corner against uh, India. Does that concern you? No, it doesn't concern me. It's, it's not usual for us. Um, but, you know, these things can happen in, in games. Uh, so, no, it's not really a concern. Well, two coaches have put a lot of hard work into preparing their teams for this tournament. I just wonder how much sleep they've been able to get uh, over the course of the days uh, so far. Two umpires on their way out onto the field here. Maggie Giddens of the United States and Emi Yamada of Japan lining up either side of the tournament mascot here at Lila. And here come the two sides, New Zealand in their traditional uh, all black and England in the white tops with the, uh, the red skirts today. Coming out under uh, blue skies, a nice breeze, pretty much perfect playing conditions. And uh, well, the English flags there flying proudly in the crowd. And the two sides uh, out on the field. Billy Owsley making a 100th appearance for England uh, today. Acknowledged by the crowd, it was a special moment, but no fuss at this stage at least. And now the anthems will be back the other side of these.
then of New Zealand. Observed uh, by the fans uh, in the stands uh, here as well, who will do well to fill this stadium with the uh, noise tonight. We've been used to seeing the stands packed on the days when the Dutch have been uh, playing, but uh, no Dutch fixture today, so we're a little uh, less full than before. Tossing the coin, change of uh, a pennant there. I'm sure both sides will be eager to get into this one. There's the uh, New Zealand team, captained by Olivia Mary up, uh, up front. Still very much a, a key player for them and still a real handful in the opponent's circle. And lots of uh, talent behind that line as well. There's Darren Smith, very realistic, very thorough. We heard in his analysis of the game just how much... Uh, time he spent looking at the, uh, the England performance knows exactly where the threat comes from and what his team needs to do. And here's the England huddle. Frank Allen looking for some job for there, getting his uh, lens into the huddle. Maddie Hitch at the back of the uh, picture there. She really was an outstanding form the, the other day, day made a couple of the Ginny world-class saves. Pretty much sums up where she is. Still one of the very top goalkeepers in the world of hockey. Holly Burnway giving the team chat there. And there's the side selected by uh, David Ralph, Maddie Hinch, of course, in goal. Holly Pernweb lining up there directly in front of her. Up front, they have some genuine speed merchants, Messrs. Owsley, uh, Petter, Martin, and uh, Rea and Hamilton, all capable of putting in uh, pacey shifts for the team. And David Ralph knows exactly what's uh, at stake today. A win for either of these two sides, and they do uh, exercise a degree of control over this ultra tight goal. New Zealand bench, and their opposite number is just a few uh, metres down the grindstand side. So the scene is set here for what will bring down the curtain on this uh, three match day of hockey. Maddie Hinch looking down into setting so it's not quite as dramatic as it's been perhaps early in the week a little, little more cloud to cover which might help well, New Zealand are in party mood by lots of things over there just waiting for the, the first single of the week which we now get and away we go England in the white New Zealand of course in the all black sitting alongside me and joining me in commentary of this one uh, former captain of South Africa Marsha Cox Marsha you know these two sides uh, well enough what sort of game are you going to see I think we can expect a fast paced game and also one that's uh, physical I'm looking forward to seeing New Zealand have a solid PC defense and I'm sure they're going to want to improve on that from their first game as well as seeing a, a really skillful and speedy attack from England. Yes, it has the potential to be a classic, but we've seen a lot of tension in this group already today. Let's just hope both sides can find just a little bit of freedom to turn on the entertainment. But there is a huge amount at stake here. Let's not uh, underestimate that. It's OK. The result today. 
puts you very much in the box seats. The hole playing the ball cross field. Receives it back again. And then pushing the Ellie Rea forward. Not to do the chasing down, but New Zealand advancing. At least the halfway line. Rea putting in the hard yards running from side to side in chase of the ball. Good work by uh, Hannah Martin there, one of the speed merchants that uh, Darren Smith was re referring to before the start of the game. Teaming on their New Zealand opponent. Free it to uh, England here. Just a couple of metres outside that New Zealand circle. Good low challenge taken cleanly. That's so going to be a penalty corner for England here. The circle, so that's in. On the line is in the circle, which is why, yeah. Well, Mikey Giddens, the uh, United States up by here. The award of England is a penalty corner. Well, New Zealand a little nonplussed, I have to say, on uh, reflection. That was a little harsh. No Do referral. You need to no, I can see it. Okay. okay, thanks, Anne. Five, be ready. Foot was very close to the uh, the edge of that circle, and on the line is in. Stick, stick. Taking on the stick, England still have the chance here. Shot comes in, big deflection, oh. yeah. and England have forced it over the line and have the lead here. New Zealand unable to react, and England have the lead. Let's watch it again. England do well to just stay patient and make sure that the ball goes on target, giving the, giving the other player a chance to play the rebound. Really well done by uh, Lilyowski. A no. great way to, to start your 100th international. What a way to start. Well, no wonder she was uh, all smiles there. 100th cap a and a very Hello. important goal ball, there for Lily Owsley. Ball, ball please. Uh, oh, no. Okay. All right, ready, Anne? Well, the perfect start as far as England are concerned. They have a lead. Lily Owsley, of course, has played uh, many more international matches, but uh, today is 100 England caps for her. Always have the confusion about uh, Great Britain as well. To the 100 England caps, she's also represented Great Britain on 84 occasions. So we're talking about a, a whole heap of experience in there. And we're talking about the player who's given England the lead. Important for New Zealand, they don't panic here, need uh, just to carry on, stick to the processes. Some really solid play from the, the English defence and the midfield, being able to retain the ball and just be patient as they keep making the connections with each other. Anna Martin trying to uh, find her way through there. She's won her team a long corner here as England continues to press Please, in these ball. early stages. Giselle Ansley with this one. 
patiently playing the ball back through her captain and now worked out to that right hand side for Grace Ballsden. You can see New yep. Zealand's uh, intent to put England under pressure and keep putting the ball carrier under pressure. Um, hopefully you'll also see them starting to win the ball. England playing with the wind in the sails at the moment. Now New Zealand down this right hand side. Good strong challenge put in. Excellent work again there from uh, Pern Webb. Well, not the start that man wanted, that's for sure, but there's a long, long way to go in this, and he'll know that this game is going to have plenty of twists and turns in it. England again drilling it forward, not finding the accuracy of pass required yeah, this time there. Yeah, that's great. Tessa Howard. New Zealand playing the ball around, stick to stick, trying to get a little more confidence and flow into their own game. And Murray just holding things up near halfway and losing possession. England looking eager. Howard again, who's drifted wide to this left hand side. goes on. Good ball there into the circle, New Zealand. Need to be on their metal there. And now breaking down that left hand side. Real speed about that New Zealand attack and also the England cover as well, matching stride for stride. This okay. is already yeah. looking like it's going to be a really entertaining contest. When you're playing in this sort of game, Marsha, and you concede earlier like that, does it throw you off your, off your game, that your game plan has well, suddenly come unstuck? That's the key, Nick, is to stay focused and trust the process. It is still a lot more, a lot of minutes to be played, and you know that there's still a lot in the game. You've got to keep working on, on the things that are going well for you and just tighten up on the things that, that let you down in those first few minutes. And like I said, trust the process, trust the, the tactic, and actually trust each other to do a good job. For the time being, it's England very much in the ascendancy, coming forward again, and with a uh, degree of confidence in their game. Be aware of physical area. Turn Webb coming forward and continuing a run forward as well as Holly Hunt sets off. Ellie Rea on the ball, and into the circle she goes as well. And you see them just about getting there in the end. And that's also given as a penalty corner for a, a check on the stick there. It's great, strong attacking run. And of course a well-deserved penalty corner for that stick check. Well, we know what happened uh, last time. You're at 15. Remember, I asked David whether he was concerned about uh, not winning a penalty corner against India, and he rather dismissed the question. We can see why now. Second corner of the game for England here. Shortly to be followed by the third. It's a retake. It's a retake, ladies. Let's go. Maggie Giddens trying to encourage England to get on with this penalty corner because this is uh, simply a retake, so no break in play. There's a stop. Well blocked by New Zealand. Now they can break here, some space. 
Mary has taken an advanced position. Here she is in the England circle. Goes for goal! And it's come off a New Zealand foot. Oh my goodness, there was danger there for England. Really effective um, penalty corner defense. Well run out by Francis Davies. And then to have the quick counter, smart play. And the cross from Mary. Really unfortunate on that far post play, but everything according its textbook play. You couldn't ask for anything more as a coach, I think, from your players. Except to Except score the, the goal. Finish. <laughs> you don't want much, do you? Free hit here for New Zealand. Just under six minutes left in this uh, first quarter. England have the lead. Carrying the ball well, that's a, a teasing ball to be chased after. Just too much pace on it that time. And a good uh, bit of running there by Sophie Hamilton wide on that right hand side. Trying to run the ball down. New Zealand are applying a high press on on England in their in their build up. However, they're falling short in the midfield as the English midfielders are able to run through and break the lines. And that's causing a lot of damage um, for the New Zealand defense. New Zealand trying to get behind the England defense again. Again, the free hit goes in favour of England. Umpire Yamada wanting the free hit taken from the correct position. <laughs> England set off again. works through Darcy Bourne. A long corner, just knocked away there from the stick of Tessa Howard. You? Yes. Good defending there by New Zealand. Eyes firmly on the ball. with the uh, restart here for New Zealand. It's a lovely crisp pass to this right-hand side. Nicely trapped as well there by uh, Caitlin Cotter. something for New Zealand here going in hunt on the hunt for an equaliser okay. before the nothing, nothing. Yep. first break now less than two and a half minutes away they'll be smarting to have gone behind because the penalty corner that led to the goal was uh, rather a soft one it wasn't uh, produced from a, a spell of English pressure Rather an unguarded foot close to the edge of the circle. Balls on the pitch, making balls them the... pay a very heavy okay, penalty. Okay. <laughs> New Zealand using the whip on the left hand side. Long corner. Ninety seconds then left in the first quarter of play. New 
Zealand in possession and on the attack. A good deception there, keeping possession for New Zealand. Thank you, Maggie. And uh, Jack's there just getting a foot in the way of it, and England can break. and feeds one down, this is good from England. Once again, Stern defending from New Zealand. Megan Hull being really solid in the defence for New Zealand. She's, she's really a, proven. She's a rock, isn't she? Yeah, exactly. Hey, this rock. David Rolfe looking quite relaxed down there on the team bench. I'm sure internally he's anything but relaxed, but his team have made a really good start to this one in uh, what is clearly a key game in the pool. Against an old foe that they know each other so well. All bouncing through the circle there, and New Zealand unable to Pick it up, and uh, no time for England to launch another attack. And we reach quarter time here with the goal from our centurion of the day, Lily Owsley. The difference between the two sides, but uh, clearly this one is not going to be decided in uh, in the first quarter of hockey. But, uh, after 15 minutes play here, the scoreline reads: New Zealand nil, England one. Thank you. Time for some highlights. Very good. Yeah. So hard work going on in both the huddles uh, down there. England with their noses in front, but not a lead that uh, David Rolfe will be relying on. But England showed enough in that first quarter to suggest there are goals in this game for them today. That's the story of the game so far. Most of the stats favouring uh, England there. the one at the bottom and there's our goal scorer Lily Owsley. Owsley's been playing uh, club hockey in uh, the Netherlands recently with the HDM club. She was with me earlier in the day with one of her teammates Flora Peel was in the commentary box uh, alongside me for that one. And, uh, Lily is going to be returning back to England to play hockey at Hampstead and Westminster in the new English season. She's got a fair amount of international hockey to play before that with the upcoming uh, Commonwealth Games and also a, a European qualifier in this crazy summer of uh, international hockey. We're asking an awful lot of our athletes. Holly Hunt battling away there through some choppy waters. Again here, coming close. Number 21, number 21, you coming, coming, yes. You, no, 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 just warning. Just wait a second. Yes. I want you very carefully off the ball, don't push. Take your time, Emma. Eyes have eyes everywhere. Little warning there. Good. Yep. Delivered to uh, Alia Jacks. Oh, 
again. They really have an appetite for the attack today. Really looking up for this one. New Zealand trying to get their own forwards uh, more into game than they are at the moment. And Olivia Meary, they have one of the, uh, the top goal scorers of this uh, current era. And they can be well aware of what she can do, how she can hurt you as an opponent. But so far, England have been quite successful in stifling the number of New Zealand opportunities. Not too many sights of that England goal guarded so efficiently by Maddie Hinch. Who won't be sorry to reach half time and build a defending the goal at the other end because the sun is going straight down the pitch into the eyes of Maddie Hinch at the moment. Can't be easy. Honestly, fires one across with some accuracy. Now Darcy Bourne. Showing his speed, but then just unable to keep a stick on the ball and kicking it instead. Just bring it back out here, yeah? Darcy Bourne, who was drafted into the squad as one of the travelling reserves when the poor appeal picked up that unfortunate thumb injury. Heartbreak for Flora, but an opportunity for Darcy. Penalised there. Could it, I wonder for a moment whether with the little push on the English player was going to be penalised, but umpire indicating that uh, England was shielding the ball illegally. It's the game following the sort of pattern that you expected to hear, Marsha. Well, exactly what I expected to see, a physical game and also a high-paced game. I think I didn't expect England yep. to be as patient as they as they have been, and it's proven to be a success for them. Now, Mary forces no, away no, through a couple of no. challenges. No end product from it, though. England again. Clean. Yes, patient is a, a good description. Long corner. Oh. You see him keeping it in play. Too far, too far. Yeah. Again, to England. Defenders there, descending on the uh, New Zealand girl and dispossessing her. And then play the ball out of the shadows, back into their own circle. Back into the shadow lands again. Going through a little bit of a cagey spell at the moment. Not picked up by Darcy Bourne. Skips past one challenge. Free it's gone in favour of England. I saw a foot. That was nicely dug out by Unsworth. Out to that far side. The summit for England here. Ball pulled back into the circle. And it's found a New Zealand foot along the way, and it's going to be another penalty corner for England. Nice piece of play. And it was a bit scrappy as the ball comes across into the into the top of the or into the nine yard area. A little bit of a bounce on the ball there. 15. Making it difficult for the defenders.
So what have they got planned for this one? Oh, that's a good save. That's a good save indeed. That was important. Grace Bolson getting the shot away. Keeper doing well, dropping down on that one. Brock Roberts in the New Zealand goal. We've seen some top uh, draw goalkeeping during the course of this World Cup already here in Amsterdam. Long corner. Giselle's the eager to get the ball back into play here. Good. That's pretty much a hallmark of the England game today. There's a real urgency about their game. And the key for New Zealand is to just control and manage the phases of play. They haven't had, had much success with their circle entries, so I think that they would want to look at um, how to improve on those. And we see the save again by Brooke Roberts, who's really good. Last one. Outside. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. goalkeeping really has uh, improved with kind of all comparison. I'm going to pace down that right hand side. And Webb. Halston looks up into that uh, setting sun. I hope she can see more than we can. When we look to our left, we're dazzled by the sun. A clever little deflection down the, uh, the touchline there, but it'll run harmlessly out of play. The idea was good. Alison Annan up in the stand there. Getting a bird's eye view of this one. England take on China next. Bit of a busman's holiday for as far as uh, the coaches are concerned, even when the teams aren't playing. They have their own eyes or the video cameras trained on their opponents. I've seen long enough to know just how hard coaching staff work at these tournaments. There's not an awful lot of sleep. Discussions and uh, analysis often going into the wee small hours of the morning. Outside, guys. England's free hit. Sweeps it back to the halfway line again. Patient stuff this from England. Bolsden takes the next pass for Unsworth. Up to the edge of that Too circle. Bad. Just outside. Mm, free, just Move outside deep. the circle. And certainly not from where Laura Unsworth was trying to take it there. Keeper watching that one. Thought about playing, but thought better of it. Tessa Howard again, Where you are just sniffing yes, around there, making a nuisance of herself in the uh, in her opponent's circle. Well, just about five minutes left in this uh, first half. The game still very much in the balance, but England have that crucial lead. Courtesy of Lily Owsley. And coming forward again, looking for a second. There might be something for England here. Shot on the reverse, stick side, and it's just wide. Well, confident enough to take the shot on there. Just, yeah. Tessa Howard's shot always passing wide of that far post, but not by a lot. It was a great pass into finding Tessa Howard absolutely free on the top of the circle. Shot on 
taken a couple of paces off uh, our line and got the angles absolutely sorted. She knew that was going wide and didn't need to make a play for it. Again, eager to get back on the ball, though. Real urgency about their game. They really are up for this one. David Rolfe shouting out, come on girls, keep the energy uh, up here, knowing that a second goal before half-time really would it's from here, guys. improve their position no end. There's Izzy Petru, who scored such a wonderful right goal for England Where it came from? the other day. A moment of uh, genuine quality. Zealand looking to launch an attack of their own. Well, not the most sympathetic pass there, looking for Olivia Meary. <laughs> Toman plays the ball back into a cer the circle. Playing a patient game here. Using the ball with uh, a great deal of intelligence. Now, uh, Raya off one of her runs. Just a little over a year in trying to uh, win the ball back there. Come on, get in front of it. But when you've got that sort of pace that uh, Raya has as a Great premium in playing the ball to her. She can unlock any defence. <laughs> New Zealand's free hit. Just about two yeah. minutes then left yeah. in the first half. It's in another goal before the interval. Well, New Zealand on the attack here, pulling the ball back. Half chance here, shot goes in. Well, there is indeed a goal. New Zealand have scored it. And they're back on terms and a broad smile on the face there of the New Zealand coach and in the stands as well. It starts all the way back with solid defense and a quick free hit from Megan Hull and then this is really fantastic play as she brings this, the ball into the circle. And what a great finish. This is, this is a team goal that I think New Zealand will be really, really pleased with. Lynch does exceptionally well with that little lift over the stick and as she carries the ball and finds the New Zealander with know. the space to have that quick backhand shot and goal. Really solid connection there. Uh, Maddie Hinch might have been unsighted either by players in front of her or the the sun that we've referred to before. But either way, we're back to all square again. Just pull it. Yeah, good. So England, who've led in this game for so long in this half, pegged back just before the interval. Can there be another twist in the game before half-time, which is now pretty much one minute away. New Zealand now looking confident, and here's uh, Mary on the ball. Plenty of white shirts back for England. Mary just holding it up, waiting for support in the middle, and then get rather spoiling it by getting right underneath the ball into the circle. Set the ball. There's our goal scorer there, Katie Dorr. And there's a, a happier man. I won't see that he's uh, completely happy with that uh, first half. He'd be a whole lot happier having got the equaliser. Q celebrations. Katie Dorr from uh, Auckland. Scoring a crucial goal for her team. 
And for all the hard work that David Ralph's skills have uh, put into this first half, we reach uh, half time with once again nothing between these two uh, two sides. It's uh, New Zealand nil, England one. Well, Lily Owsley gave England the the perfect start. Her goal coming in the fourth minute. And England played really well for long periods of that, but they were caught out there right at the end of the uh, the half. They were off making a few uh, points in there. Much would have pleased him, but he'll be disappointed to have seen his side concede so late on. Well, once again, this uh, pool is going to keep us on the edge of our seats. We're going to take a short break, but. Uh, Marsh and I will be back to see how this one unfolds in the second half. Do join us if you can then. Welcome back then to a sun-kissed Amsterdam where the two sides are still in their dressing rooms after a pulsating uh, first half. The half-time scoreline here reads New Zealand 1, England 1, with England taking an early lead, only to be pegged back, as we're shortly going to see in our highlights package for you. So, Pool B action, New Zealand against England. Early penalty corner here for England. Blocked initially. New Zealand unable to clear it fully. And Lily Owsley on the 100th appearance for England, forcing it over the line and putting England ahead. And not the tidiest of goals, but in a group that's been as tight as this one, in a game that was always likely to be a feisty affair, a lead is a lead. England again with a penalty corner. And once again, stout resistance from New Zealand. Looking to catch England on the break. Really good use of the ball and then uh, unable to deliver the coup de grace at the end of a flowing move that took the ball from one end to the other. Again, an England uh, penalty corner. Producing the best out of New Zealand's keeper there, Brooke Roberts. So with time running out in the first half, New Zealand throwing an aerial ball forward. England with a missed trap. Ball pulled back and Katie Dorr beats Maddie Hinch and rattles the ball into the back of the England goal for an equaliser. Hinch just taking a step to her left and the ball beating her down her right foot side for the equaliser. David, tight affair so far. How do you think the first half went? Yeah, we're generally pleased with how we played. I'm uh, disappointed to lose so close to half time, but I think we played over, overall pretty well, created some chances, won some corners and stuff, so we're disappointed to only have scored the one goal so far. Are you seeing any improvements compared to the match against India? Yeah, I think we've uh, consistency has been better. We've played better for longer periods in the game, so um, I think we've had control of the game for longer periods of time and actually created some chances with that control, so yeah, I think we've done all right. Great, thanks. Thank you. David, how would you look back at that first half? Darren, sorry. <laughs> no worries. I mean, it was a first half full of pace and vigour and hard running, and you expect that from England. And the black sticks and the second half is going to be pretty similar. Nice for us to, you know, pinch a goal in that second quarter, and I thought it was a quality finish by Caddy Door, and hopefully the second half is just as good. You're playing with a high line of pressure. How's that working out for you? I, mean, I think it's okay. Like you've got to admire the English. You know, they they have a bit of poise at the back and. You know, they've got some experienced customers that are doing some, some good work, but, uh, you know, the second half will be the same. We'll get in their face and press and press and press. Thank you very much. So it sounds as if there's plenty to look forward to in this second half. There's the story of the first half of action. England uh, bossing the circle penetrations there by quite a margin. It's what you do in the circle that matters, no? I'm not surprised that... Uh, 
David Rolfe showing a little bit of frustration that his team haven't been able to use the position uh, a little bit better than they have and find themselves level at half-time rather than ahead. They created opportunities, they had enough territory and a quality ball perhaps to put more away. So all to play for in the second half here and uh, now it's uh, England with the sun behind them and New Zealand's defence will have the difficulty of dealing with it. Now Pernwell brings it forward a little more than walking pace and then plays the ball directly straight through the lines and out over the baseline. Zealand turning the ball back to England, who will uh, run at the New Zealand uh, defence all day if they're allowed to. Doran's clearly a, a fan of the England game. He's uh, on several occasions noted the quality that England do have in their, their ranks. Showing great respect to his opponent. Doesn't mean he doesn't want, doesn't mean he doesn't expect his team to win this one though. And they've shown that they're more than capable In. of pinching a win here. And the way this is this pool is going, Marsh, you wouldn't bet against another draw, would you? I certainly hope not for another draw. I'm hoping that one of the teams really want to show their dominance and take the lead as number one in this pool. With a win under their belt, that is. New Zealand picking up a green card there. There she is, Tessa Jock, in a white uh, headband. Didn't Really need an extra break. She's only just had one, but uh, she's got an enforced one now. And the team will have to cover for her absence. Good. And be careful with challenges uh, coming back like that. And trying to move the ball around at the back making this New Zealand team who are down to 10 do a little more additional leg work. Right, the ball's exactly where the umpire wants it. Now, where we go again? Perm web. Shot on the turn, very well parried by the goalkeeper. Danger. You might have heard the umpire saying that I couldn't Danger. see, and I've got some Not sympathy with her. Goalkeeper. Danger. Yes. Yes. And the been given for danger off the goalkeeper. New Zealand just asking the question to see whether they wanted to, to challenge it or not. Tessa Howard punches the air with delight. She's really powerful in the circle and as well Isn't to get the, the um, shot on goal really quickly. She has a great capability of the one touch receive and, and hit it at goal on his second touch. She's a very exciting one prospect now. indeed. Two, one. And then playing a routine and then firing it wide. It was a little bit ponderous at the top of the circle. Intention to go back to the injector, but a little too fast for her to react. Like a touch from the New Zealand defender. New Zealand would want to keep possession of the ball for as long as possible as they are man down, as they go into these final seconds of of just playing with ten men. Yes, the top team is very adept at running the clock down, managing the game situation. Too far. England 
chopping the ball out of defence. It's going to roll all the way over the baseline at the other end of the field. See the goalkeepers at that end with the, the hand up, trying to shield their eyes from the uh, from the sun. England on the attack. A lovely work. Control ball, finding the New Zealand foot. Good work again there from uh, yes, Ellie Rea of the uh, East Grinstead Club. So one goal be the inside. Megan Hall will be disappointed with that ball finding her foot. But England are doing really well. They've been patient in the midfield, making the turnover in the midfield, and then playing the ball forward um, with conviction and and intent on getting the ball into the circle and. Penalty corner number four for England. New Zealand still to uh, earn one of their own. Something they will look to change before the end of this one. Oh, well blocked on the stick and cleared out to this left-hand side as well. Now, what can uh, New Zealand produce on the break here? Katie Dorr into the England circle. Darcy Bourne is with her. Maddie Hinch just leaving a near post and uh, was there in case Dahl was able to uh, get past Bourne, but England has survived that one. Great penalty corner defence. The first wave run is really effective for New Zealand when they can get the stick on it. Yes, it's Hope Ralph who has the job of sprinting from the... Uh, from the line, she's very, very brave and very adept at it. She's really fast at getting there, so. And she's going to have to do it again because exactly. England have got another penalty corner here. Good, determined forward play there by England. There's uh, Hope Rolf just pulling on all the necessary protection that she needs. Ten. Ten. But she is a real flyer. Five or in. Three, two, one, play. England trying the luck with a different routine again. The umpire's given the penalty corner. New Zealand considering whether no, they're going to no, no. <laughs> refer this, no. but no, they're not. England know that the first wave is really fast and are looking to play some variations. It's yes, it's forced so England no, no, into no, no. changing their <laughs> routines. Darcy Bourne finding herself the centre of attention there for a moment. Now, what about this one? Shot comes in, oh, that's much better. And I don't think the umpires have ordered it. I think the umpire's blown for... Yes, you, you take, you take, you take, yes, yes. Blown for danger here, This is a strange one. You see me? I danger, so they want to go. Are we checked for danger? Yes. Lorraine Forge, the Belgian umpire, is on video umpiring duties. Think of this one, Marsha. It's a very interesting call. This is a drag flick direct on goal. They are calling the danger, or the umpire has deemed it as dangerous on that first wave. Do you have any other angle? It is quite challenging to see on the different angles. It seems to have deflected off, yeah, off the, the Zealand back. player. It, it's hit the, yes, we didn't see it on first uh, first watching, but it's come off. Okay, off this the is arm. coming. I think this could go in uh, New Zealand's favour here. Amy, yes. There is no clear reason to change the decision, so free it out, and uh, England lose the referral. Okay. And it has indeed gone in New Zealand's favour. Lucky to have one of the best umpires in the world in the video box, and Lorraine Delforge. She took her time, and she uh, 
Yeah, should have done. Coming off the forearm there, the New Zealand girl. It was dangerous. It bowls and celebrations proving to be just a little bit premature there, but it was a, a much better routine from England. Also well seen by the umpire on the ground. She blew it straight away. Yes, absolutely exactly. right. Fair comment. Her colleague would have had a, a reasonable view of that looking down, and uh, I didn't hear whether they were communicating with each other, whether Maggie Giddens was, was able to say to uh, to Emmy Yamada, yep, look good to me too. But the video certainly solved any problems there might be. So England frustrated by that, thought they got the lead. So having to think again. Eight minutes to go in this uh, third quarter. third game we've had today and they've all been very very tense affairs I have to say just shows just uh, how little there is between the sides here in Amsterdam how about this for pace from England terrific sprinting ability there with the ball from Ellie Rea well defended by New Zealand now Mary if she looks up, she'll see there's a player behind England uh, defence there, but can't find the, the pass to her. Anna Toman was well positioned. A hunt wide on the right-hand side for England. Feeds one down the touchline. Keeper gets an important right foot to the ball. New Zealand taking it out of their own circle, playing the ball onto the foot of... Holly Hunt there. Not to your side. Hey? Not going in. <laughs> to England again. Having a good spell it's of good pressure. Line, <laughs> David Ralph will be looking for some end products. Card there. Yeah, for a little bit of a body chart. And now it's going to be key for New Zealand to to take advantage of their additional player on the field. So Shannon McCallum is off for a couple of minutes. Oh, it's gone through the legs of Hinch and New Zealand have a lead here. Well, I didn't see that one coming. Well, high fives down there. England have just gone down in numbers. Find themselves behind on the scoreboard. Talk you through this one, Marsha. Yeah, it is really effective build-up play in New Zealand. Of making those connections a little bit better. Katie Dore just running the ball and unexpected backhand slice at the goal. But really, really effective. And Caddy catching Maddie Hitch just all footed. Well, the old story is if you get something on target, the goalkeeper's got to do something with it. And even the best sometimes let them in. So New Zealand are ahead by two goals to one. A rueful looking uh, David Ralph there. It's come took off the a, took a deflection of Giselle Anzi, didn't it? Enough perhaps to wrong foot Maddie Hinch. <laughs> well, that's one of the younger supporters here, I have to say. Steady, Mum, steady. So 
for England uh, find themselves behind for the first time in this World Cup. Now they're going to need to dig deep. Still a long way to go. Five minutes left in this third quarter. That last one was for physical, not that. Tyler Lynch from New Zealand is putting in a, a lot of legwork and actually proving to be quite effective at putting that English defense under a lot of pressure. England still down to 10. It's shortly be back to full strength. And needing to regroup and reassess here. Housley sets off on one of those uh, wobbling runs of hers. Into the circle, all brave defending there by New Zealand, but it's... Uh, must have struck the... was it the foot there? Yeah, it was excellent uh, hand speed by Sophie Hamilton as she brings the ball into the circle. Her foot. Just drawing the foul out of the defender. So a chance for England to strike right back. Brooke Roberts with the problem of the sun. Well, that's a good indication of just how strong it is as well. Will England attempt to go for the direct shot at goal again? They will, but it's uh, deflected wide. Giselle Ansley there, frustrated. So difficult with those little deflections that led to the New Zealand goal. That was very well defended by New Zealand. Nice save from the line stop. I'm sure a word of thanks from the keeper there, who was beaten by that shot from Ansley. Excellent defending by New Zealand. and just having a bit of a breather here, allowing England to some possession. Now winning the ball back and trying to get themselves on the front foot again. Here's Olivia Merry with a chance to run at the England defence. That's a great challenge. There was only ever going to be one result of that uh, tackle from uh, Pern Webb. England's big game players, and they've still got plenty of them about, need to really step up here. Yeah, now is on. Pull so away way back into this one. Okay, I got you, girl. Yeah. Just over two minutes remaining in this uh, third quarter. This is about the time that New Zealand found their equaliser at the end of the first half. Can England respond in kind? Well, again, New Zealand penalised another penalty corner. Penalty corner tally mounting here for England. seem to have gone for the last couple of corners they have taken a, a very simple and direct route I'm just feeling that while the sun is as awkward as it is it's uh, potentially a real problem for the New Zealand defenders and I'm sure that that is the case can they get it all right this time it's a good say but it's not clear yet and the chance goes begging again Get that rebound under control. 
She's done really well to get down on that. So, just under 90 seconds left in this, uh, this third quarter play. New Zealand, having got back on terms just before half-time, have used this quarter to good effect and have taken the lead through uh, Katie Dorr via a deflection off Giselle Ansley. And, oh, that's a nasty one. Take your time, White. Clock's out. Take your time. It's your ball. We're seeing both teams trying to force the play a little bit as they get impatient and are making a lot of unforced errors. Fiona Crackle's making her way across to receive some uh, attention. I want some uh, ice on that, I would imagine. Physio's uh, quickly across to assess the damage. With the team doctor. Painful blow right on the inside of the knee. Now New Zealand into that England circle. They're still looking for their first penalty corner of the game. They've got a free hit close to that English right circle here. Close to the circle. 30 seconds. Doesn't seem long, but it's long enough to get this free hit taken, that's for sure. Two New Zealand five. into the circle. Shona McCallan there showing uh, Every bit of energy and determination, as you'd expect, from one of uh, England's top players. Mm. And that uh, hooter that you sound in the, uh, it sounds in the distance there signals the end of the third quarter. And we've seen uh, Katie Dorr strike twice now for New Zealand and give them a very narrow lead here. Food for thought, perhaps, for Darren Smith. New Zealand coach but his team have a lead and uh, it's his opposite number David Rolfe who has the problems now New Zealand 2 England 1 Well, it's yet another nail-biting uh, game here in Amsterdam today. We've had three games. They've all been uh, in a very similar vein. New Zealand have a narrow advantage, but England have shown that they, uh, they have the quality and the desire still to turn this one around in the final 15 minutes here. The Lee Owsley in shot, though, gave England the lead in this 100th uh, appearance for England today. Another wonderful uh, scene here. We've been blessed so far in this tournament with uh, excellent weather, ideal playing conditions. Not too hot, a little bit of a breeze for the players, and mercifully dry. So New Zealand will uh, start the ball rolling when they get the signal in this uh, final quarter. 15 minutes to go. New Zealand have the lead. Are they going to hang on to it? What do you think, Marsha? Well, they're definitely starting with an intention to attack down their right-hand side. And it's, um, it's come at speed. Just falling short in the, in the attacking 23. I think this New Zealand team, if they want to um, hold on to their 2-1 lead, it's going to be about managing the waves of the English attack. Well, there's a wave coming their way right now. But England in possession, playing it forward. Trying to bully their way into that circle. They've won a free hit. Good, you're fine. Shot on the reverse stick side, up in the air off the defender stick. Well done, Em. And cleared out towards the uh, far touch line there. Hannah Martin trying to introduce some tempo into the game. Here. 
free hits gone in uh, New Zealand's favour here. That ball hanging in the air, beautifully brought, brought down in the end. Megan Hall again solid in the defence for New Zealand, just clearing it out. It's been so easy to take a swipe at that and concede an easy Thank corner, you. wouldn't it? Yes. She kept her eye on it. Picture of calm. Ready when you are? Yeah. And they're moving the ball around. And then just missing the pass. Lily hours you out on the right hand side. Hold on, hold on. Rose Tynan yeah. sitting on the bench there, having got the uh, yellow yeah, card for that rather wild tackle on Lily Owsley. That could be crucial as far as England is concerned. Hannah Martin going into the circle, but uh, just rather over cooking it there. Little help here, guys. Little help here. So an anxious, well, what have we got? Just under four minutes for New Zealand here, down to ten. They can expect England to uh, throw everything at them during this period because uh, although it's only a, a player short, it uh, does give them a significant advantage. And when you see players of the quality of Holly Pern Webb missing the ball, you know that they're starting to feel the pressure down there in this uh, pool that defies description. At the start of the game, Nick, we spoke, about, we spoke about trusting the process. And that's exactly what the English team are going to need to do. It really worked well for them when they were patient in the midfield. They made the turnovers and they had a direct attack. They need to just trust that process and continue doing the things that work well for them. And I'm sure a second goal will come. But at the same time, New Zealand are seem, seeming to get more settled into this game and more comfortable and more confident as well. Well, there's confidence, if you like, on the ball there from the girl who's uh, scored both goals already for uh, New Zealand. Very composed for a hit New Zealand. Blacksticks using this left-hand side now. Tessa Jop. Another free hit. And again, seconds ticking down on that uh, yellow card suspension. So New Zealand managing the clock well here. England need possession of the ball. They've got it now from a free hit. Level with the top of their circle. Well, that's careless. And uh, New Zealand have got on the ball there, got a free hit here. On the hash. Again, Good. jangling nerves. Largely responsible, I think, for that mistake. Yes, I guess, the, going back to this, uh, your thought about the process, I'm sure you're 100% correct, but the longer the game goes on and uh, you find yourself still chasing your goal, the harder it is to believe in that process. Well, New Zealand are exactly what their coach would have wanted here because they forced a penalty corner. I think you lost your referral. Their first of the game. England wondering about the referral, but it's been pointed out to them they lost to that one at the other end of the field earlier on with that uh, one that it's went against them. Remember, appealed about the uh, umpire's decision to disallow what they thought was a goal that uh, on replay was shown to clearly come off uh, a defender at a dangerous height along the way. Did you see this player make a fake? No? 
I, it's not that I don't believe you, but I didn't see it, and you did step, so you have to go. Not on a, not a PC. It has to be a stroke or roll. So England losing a player to the halfway line, and uh, it's Holly Perweb who sets off. So a little more space here for New Zealand. Shot comes in, parried by hit, follow-up shot, and batted over the line. It was probably going to drop into the net anyway, and New Zealand have a third. And England having to regroup here and rethink. I'll talk us through this one, uh, if you will, Marsha. It's a hit on goal with the intention of playing the rebound, which they do really, really effectively. And Taryn Davy getting in on that rebound after the injection. Really well done. I must point out once again how important Tyler Lynch was in creating this corner and also on the rebound in this in this penalty corner for New Zealand. Lynch with the first say, but uh, unable to do anything about the follow-up. And Taryn Davy gives New Zealand what could prove to be now a, a winning lead. New Zealand three. England won. Remember, New Zealand scoring that goal while they were down to 10 players as well, although England, of course, losing the player to the uh, halfway line in defence of that corner. Dapper, Dapper. England were trying to make the point to the umpire that uh, they felt there had been a feint on the injection that caused the uh, overbalancing to break the line in the first place. And looking up, feeding it out to the right-hand side. Raya plays it on again for Tessa Howard. Eight minutes for England to turn this two-goal deficit now around. It's a tall order. But they're capable of doing it. But if you had to pick an opponent to do it against, you wouldn't select New Zealand, who are natural-born fighters when it comes to defending a lead. There was that goal again. Absolutely no way you can defend that. And that's the sort of fight that England need to show on the field now. They've had moments where they've dominated in the game and uh, I think we mentioned that there might have been a concern that they hadn't scored more goals while they were very much bossing things. But they need to find uh, their goal-scoring touch now, that's for sure. They'll definitely be disappointed in their penalty corner attack, having had many in this game and not, um, and not finishing them. Well, that, uh, the heart of uh, Darren Smith will be beating pretty quickly. He knows his team are in a good position now, but equally he'll know they're not over the line yet. Now, what have England got left in the tank? Whatever there is there now needs to be brought to bear in this one. Rea sets off as off times before. Just popping the ball too high, but she's not happy with the call from the umpire. It's not going to change the umpire's mind. So, Marsha, okay, still a long way to go in this uh, game yet, but your thoughts on your player of the match? Nick, to be honest, there are a number of players that have stood out for me, particularly in the New Zealand team. Um, we've seen Megan Hull in the defence be just a solid base for them. She's come to the rescue on numerous occasions and just stayed calm and composed as she clears the ball out of their circle. We also saw her being the catalyst for their second goal. Um, so she's a player that's definitely stood out for me. 
Tyler Lynch has also been a player with a high work rate and has proven very effective. Ball bouncing around in the circle. England have got a penalty corner. And where there's penalty corner, there's always an opportunity. And where there's a goal for England, we could be back very much in the melting pot again here. England uh, will take a goal here, that's for sure. They desperately need to get this routine absolutely nailed on. Eight penalty corners. Bolson with Anna Toman alongside it. Well, once again, New Zealand able to keep it out, and once again, it's the post player who's taking it off the line. My goodness, what a performance there! England trying to play the ball to the top of New Zealand circle, but New Zealand. In possession, trying to turn and get a feet around it and making a bit of a nonsense of it there. And another penalty corner. This is where you've got to stay patient and do your best not to turn over the ball. But in doing so, she's played it straight over the baseline, giving away a penalty corner. That was a great save on the line, wasn't it? Sometimes these strength and speed of the initial shot detracts from the saves but that was uh, watched all the way there by the post player and deflected wide and then trying a different routine and again it's taken off the line it was hanging in the air Th those are sometimes the more difficult ones to save Real urgency here for England. And it's uh, side netting only. Take no deflection along the way. No, 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 you don't have. England asking for a referral they don't have. No, Lily no, Harris is. No, 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 no. You don't have. Forgotten at the moment. So England just with a long corner here. Umpires can't use their own referrals at penalty corners, only for goal or no goal situations or penalty stroke, no penalty stroke. And it certainly wasn't going to be one of those. England uh, asking the questions here. But the clock not on their side. Under four minutes remaining. Ellie Rea wins another penalty corner for England here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, Marjorie, interrupted you uh, yeah, mid-flow no, 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 no. on your player of the match. Using, the, using a body. Body, yeah. New Zealand, I'm sure about this penalty you corner. You want? Okay. And it looks like they're going for a referral. Well, Megan Hell ends up on I give you penalty deck. corner because they intentionally using a body just outside out of soccer, but they don't want. I will have a look for you at the situation. Well, once again, the video umpire is called into action here, Laureen Delforge. Same again. Oh, yeah, keep going, keep going. Certainly a foot there. Off for Megan Hell. Outside the circle, it seems oh, on that foot. Coming. Yeah, I agree with that. Amy? Yep. Again, there is no clear reason to change a decision. Yep. Penalty corner and New Zealand will lose okay. the referral. So it's going to be the penalty corner. New Zealand have now lost their referral as well. And this one for England surely has to go in. We've seen uh, Francis Davies, also one of the players, stand up and step up for New Zealand, making crucial saves on the line in the penalty corner defence. I wonder if she can do it again. 
Well, she's, uh, I think that's three she's taken off the line now. Again, England blocking. Shot blocked for the first shot. And again, it's a penalty corner. Davis there again. A rueful shake of the head. Given for deliberately playing the ball over the baseline. It's a tough school, this one. I see it. Yes. Ball almost buried underneath the goalkeeper there. This time it's come off uh, an English foot and much to the delight of a New Zealand crowd. New Zealand get a free hit. New Zealand have done well in their penalty corner defence. This is a, a great save from the keeper and just staying patient as she wait for her defenders to come and clear it. Well, New Zealand's goalkeeper uh, and defensive coach at the uh, penalty corners. Luxanne and uh, are there tonight because they've done very well indeed in defence. And more to do, another penalty corner here. Did we ever get to the player of the match? Not one in particular. Come I've on. named a few that have stood out you for have. me. I, th I think we've pretty much had the entire team. Just give me a name. <laughs> I'll give it to you after this penalty corner, Nick. Yeah, thank you. That's very kind. So into the last three minutes, New Zealand leading by three goals to one. England throwing absolutely everything at uh, New Zealand here. Maddie Hinch on a 23-metre line. No sign that she's going to be withdrawn uh, to allow an extra outfield player to take the field just yet. Shot comes in, into the goalkeeper's pads. Half cleared. England winding up again and again. Oh, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal down there. No, class is danger. Well, England are really hammering away at the New Zealand door here, and they're just refusing to open it. No. Maggie, are you happy? Yeah, thank you. Yes. New Zealand are not happy with that call for a penalty corner. So they feel that the missed shot, I think. Different routine this time from England. New player going down there, holding her head. Sticks, okay, yeah, thank you. And New Zealand get the ball on the break. England have got players back. Yeah. Olivia Murray in the circle, but the ball is not going to reach it. An air of desperation now about England as they come forward again. Remember, they need two to take a point. Tobin's tackle is uh, enough to keep England in possession again. England moving the ball around, unsure of which way to turn. on the attack and New Zealand resolute as ever in defence and I think this is the moment Marsha yes so I've mentioned a few players in the New Zealand attack and defence that I thought have, have been solid and stood out but one of the players that I think deserves man of the match is Katie Dore in the midfield for New Zealand who scored the two very important goals the first one and the second one um, as well as being just a solid player in the midfield who has just held on to the ball and managed to keep possession for New Zealand whenever they've got the ball into their midfield. So Katie Dorr, number 22 for New Zealand for her two goals and a general con contribution in a pulsating game. It really has kept us uh, highly entertained, whichever side you uh, started supporting. You can't uh, doubt the commitment of both these uh, two fine sides. Marsh's uh, player of the match 
Darren Smith's already on his way down, hoping that the scoreline doesn't change dramatically in the, uh, well, now 15 minutes, 15 seconds, rather, England wish it was 15 minutes. A good day at the office for uh, Darren Smith and his New Zealand girls. Hooter sounds, New Zealand celebrate, England sink onto their haunches. They threw everything at New Zealand. They dominated in the early stages. They got the start they wanted when Lily Owsley scored on her 100th appearance for England from a fourth minute penalty corner. But uh, New Zealand were prepared to play a long game here. They were never out of contention and they kept battling and battling away. Sticking to the processes, as uh, Marsha was saying, right the way through. Two goals by uh, Katie Dorr turned it around. The first, the equaliser just before half time, really was a body blow for England. And uh, Darren, uh, Darren Davy with the icing on the cake with a yeah, third goal for New Zealand that sealed the deal. So, uh, a tense game, but at last in uh, Pool B, we've got an outright winner. It's finished here, New Zealand three, England one. So England doing their level best to put a brave face on things here and uh, congratulating their opponents, but uh, they will be shell-shocked from that. Apart from their finishing, there's not much more they could have done. Their approach play was, was pretty good. The penalty corners didn't uh, work for them today, but uh, you have to say that New Zealand defended so incredibly well. And when they got the ball past the goalkeeper, the, uh, the post player was in position, making uh, at least three worldy saves to deny England. So uh, a happy group of uh, New Zealand travellers who will have enjoyed that one. And it's New Zealand now who take a degree of control of this Pool B with just one pool game remaining. And uh, a chance for us to look back on the highlights of certainly the game of the day. So England against New Zealand. England in the white shirts with an early penalty corner goal forced over the line by Lily Owsley playing a 100th game for England, giving England the dream start that they would have wanted. New Zealand stuck to the task and uh, created a few problems of their own and found an equaliser just before half-time when Katie Dorr pulled the trigger and uh, beat Maddie Hinch. So into the third quarter now, and uh, England dispossessed outside their own circle, and Dora again buying a lottery ticket, and with a little help off the uh, stick of Giselle Ansley, finding the gap past Maddie Hinch to put New Zealand ahead. And then uh, in the closing stages, Taryn Davey popping the ball over the line with the ball over ahead, deflecting it down and into the goal to seal the deal and an important win for New Zealand in this pool. So uh, a bitter pill to swallow as far as England are concerned. A good performance, but certainly not the result that they wanted today. As far as New Zealand are concerned, well, it's all there for them now. There's still tough games to come in the group for both of these, these camps, but New Zealand now with a distinct advantage. New Zealand three, England one. New Zealand with just one penalty corner in the entire game, but they'll take that with the three points along the way. So thanks very much for your uh, company for this one. We've uh, enjoyed it very much. More uh, World Cup hockey for you coming away tomorrow. Well, how about that for a, a day's work, uh, Katie? Two uh, excellent goals from you. Yeah, um, credit to our team. I'm proud of us for sticking in it. Um, England did really well. They managed to keep us in it and keep themselves in it. It was quite close right until the end. So, yeah, I'm very proud of our girls as well, and it was nice to get the win. 
England put you under a huge amount of pressure. Your defence really dug you out of a hole with some very, very well organised defensive work. Oh yeah, the girls didn't stop. It was like that last quarter, England just kept coming and coming, but once again, I'm proud of our girls. We stuck in it, and also Brooko, our goalie, man, she kept us in it. So yeah, once again, I'm proud of them for all the efforts. Your first goal came just before half time. I'm sure the coach would say perfect timing. It certainly did change the mood in your camp, I would guess, at half time. Yeah, it's always nice going into half time knowing we're even again. Um, but yeah, the girls just knew the second half was going to be such a big battle, so we came out and yeah, we managed to tick it off, which is awesome. Well, the win puts you in a good position now within the group. Your final group game, of course, is against uh, India. How, are you looking forward to that one, and how do you see that one going? Uh, yeah, India is such a strong side, so every game matters. So it will be really interesting to see how that goes, but once again, every game counts, so our girls will be up for it, hopefully, and, yeah, it'll be fun. Well, Marsha Cox, the former South African captain, is up in the comedy box with me, and she selected you as her player of the game. So congratulations, and well done on your performance, but well done on three points for New Zealand. Thank you so much. Happy smiling at Katie Dore there as well. She might be after that uh, that performance, a, a stunning win for her. There's a little look at uh, Pool B. New Zealand now topping the pool with uh, four points. The first win, as you can see there. China and India, well, they've uh, drawn their two games so far. And uh, England bringing up the rear at the moment. We're going to talk with uh, Lily Owsley. Yeah, hi. Well, Lily, I guess we should start with a congratulations on your uh, 100th cap for England today, but uh, I can see from your face that it wasn't about you, it was about getting a result today, and it just wasn't your day, was it? Um, no, that's a nice way of putting it. Um, it wasn't our day. Um, I'm so frustrated in the minute, but I don't want that to show that we're not fighting, we're still in this tournament. Um, we lost games in Tokyo, I know that was GB, but look where we finished, this is not over, and we're basically into the knockout, and the next game we play China, and that essentially now is the final 16, we're into straight knockouts, we beat China, we'll go through, and we're going, we're going, we're going. It's not over. Um, it's not over at all, Lily, quite, defeated. quite right. Your goal gave England the perfect start, but yeah. the, and you were dominate, uh, dominating at that point, but you just couldn't get that second goal that might have made all the difference. Uh, yeah, that's that's been a bit of our narrative. Um, recently, we're playing good stuff, but ultimately, uh, hockey is defined, winning games is defined by scoring. Um, that will come. Um, we've got some fantastic goal scorers in our team, um, and it's just getting the final bits together, the connections, um, the final touch, and that will come. Hopefully, we're getting that all out in the group stage and come to the knockouts. Hopefully, we'll be going, but um, yeah, I just want to reiterate, it's not over. We're going to keep going. Um, and, you know, this is our tournament just as much as it's anyone. So, yeah, we're here to fight. Well, your message is uh, received loud and clear. It's not over till it's over and look out, China. Exactly. Thanks, Lily, for Thank fronting you. up. Thank you. Not easy. No, it's fine. Thank you very much. So frustration felt by Lily Owsley there. I'm sure there's frustration felt by the coaching uh, team as well because there were opportunities early in the game where England could have taken control of things but uh, were unable to find that crucial second goal. Quick reflection on the scores uh, in the World Cup today. Ireland losing to Chile in the opening game of the uh, day here in Amsterdam. Then we had India and China playing out a one-all draw. Down in Tarasa, Japan 3, South Africa 3. Sounds like a pulsating game, doesn't it? As those two uh, sides uh, locking horns there. And we've just watched New Zealand beating England by three goals to one, the first win in Pool B. Belgium against Australia in Pool D down in Tarasa, the late evening game. There's uh, tomorrow's programme of games for you. Ireland against Germany kicks off at uh, 4.30 Central European time here in Amsterdam. And then uh, in Tarasa, Japan take on uh, Belgium. Netherlands against Chile, the uh, Dutch team have been in supreme form here, will uh, be hoping for another full house for that game against Chile. That gets underway here at 7.30 Central European time. And finally, Australia against South Africa at the end of the day. 
down into us in Pool D. So uh, once again, thank you very much for your uh, your company today. I hope you can uh, join us back here in uh, Amsterdam again tomorrow. We'll leave you with the wonderful uh, setting sun here in Amstelveen. <laughs>